I'm Janae Price, and welcome to Ride With Me, the show where we talk to people we love. I'll find love before I find parking in Baytown. About the places they love. Today, we're catching up with rapper and actor Dumbfounded. Ah! Here's some of his recommendations for his hometown of Koreatown, Los Angeles. If it's braised, that means they take some time on that. It's not a white shirt day. And I'll be heading there myself to check them out. My skateboarding days are done. So come along and ride with me. Okay, so tell us where we are going today. Today we're going to Koreatown. Growing up in an area that's so predominantly Korean, it really gave me the confidence to be who I am and be proud of my heritage and background. You know, I can't say the same for a lot of Asian Americans maybe growing up around different parts of the country. But I was lucky enough to grow up in, in a community that was so encouraging of my culture. Everywhere I look, left and right, there's signs in Korean. And these are places that I love. So I think it influenced me and my music a lot. A lot of people talk about gentrification in different communities, but I think the popularity of Korean culture helped slow down the gentrification in Koreatown. Like people still want to go to these restaurants and businesses where the signs and menus are still in Korean. They want the authenticity of Korean culture. I literally feel like I'm getting a tour from the mayor of Koreatown himself. Yeah, I don't know if I'm the mayor. I'm definitely like a city councilman at the, at the best. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I grew up made me who I am. I would say I'm more Koreatown than Korean American, you know? I love that. Let's jump into our first location. Where are you taking us? Tansongsa. The nightlife of Koreatown is something that a lot of people are familiar with. You go out drinking, you might end up at a karaoke, but Tansongsa is one of those drinking places you might start off with. And if you go in there, it's like a look into soul nightlife almost. Like in the middle, there's uh, older Korean women cooking up the food. It's not a full bar situation, it's literally Korean beer and so That's kind of where you would kick off the night. I would go there with a lot of friends, particularly friends that aren't Korean. So juicer. When you go in there, you do see a lot of non-Korean people and maybe that one designated Korean homie that takes you around, that can read the menu for you. I want the proper introduction to any community. So you gotta have that one designated homie. The first shot we take will be a little bit of beer and one shot of soju inside the beer. Huh? Oh, all right, that's a mess. That's traditional to kick off the night. Koreans love eating while you drink. Mm. So I'd probably order something like a fish cake soup, which kind of keep you stable so you don't get too out of control. But there are all these drinking games. Okay, so I'm putting it on here. Thank you. Some people will take the top off the soju bottle and you flick it and you pass it around until someone actually flicks it off. <gasps> oh. The two people next to them have to take a shot. It's like drinking squid game. I have to make this look good. Uh, that was a bad decision. <sighs> it's still daylight. Where are we headed to next? Next up is Radio Korea, AKA Jaekwon. Radio Korea is a radio station that existed since back in the 70s to 80s. It was one of the first radio stations that broadcasted to the Korean immigrant community that didn't speak English very well. Are we allowed to skate here? And it's become one of the most infamous skateboarding places in the last 15 to 20 years. No skateboards out here? I just love the clash of a place that I remember growing up turning into this super American spot with skateboarding. We have to stand over there. I see. How the f see this? My skateboarding days are done. <laughs> when did Koreatown start influencing like your art and your music? I'd like to think I played a small part in highlighting this neighborhood and teaching people about Koreatown. 
I came up as a battle rapper and I remember when I was young, all the stuff they would hit me with would be like the same five things they knew about Asians, right? Whether it was like Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Lucy Liu, whatever. And it was like literally five people I can put on my hands. And that made me realize, wow, a lot of people out there just don't know about Asian people or Asian culture, which encouraged me to kind of talk about it constantly. That's what made me want to do it. You took it and you were like, let me show people, like, let me show people about my culture. Getting hit with these weak disses, you know? <laughs> I'm not weak, sometimes they hit, yeah. <laughs> Next up is Chunju Hanigwan. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, okay. Amazing, thank you. Hanyakwan serves all types of Korean food, so to get a taste of the culture, I feel like this is one of the spots. You can judge a really good Korean restaurant by their side dishes. You might get two side dishes, or you might get a combination of 12, because Korean food isn't just for a one person. This is not a white shirt day. Mm. It hits different. So I always say the hardest job in Koreatown is the dishwasher. A lot of dishes coming out. One of the dishes they're really known for is the army stew. And this was popularized when the U.S. Army was occupied in South Korea. And they just get canned spam, and like sausage bits or whatnot, and dump it in the soup. And I know not a lot of cultures mess with spam, but I grew up on spam. I never saw it as a gross thing, and I still don't. You know, I love a good spam bit and something. So look out for that spam. That's the move. This is good weather. Good weather. Where are we headed to next? And of course, now we're headed to Koreatown Plaza, the food court specifically. Koreatown Plaza is a mall in Koreatown. I grew up with that mall always being here. And I was like, how does the mall survive? Because I feel like all the stores there are just like, just cell phone accessories. I'm like, is this a fun? Like, I don't know. I've never seen anybody in this store. Ooh, rice cakes, yeah. okay. But the food court is the one thing that's popping there. Oh, I love these signs. You're with a group of friends and you just can't decide on a spot, that's a good place. You guys split up, get some food, and meet at the table. What's the most popular number dish one. here? Number one? Okay, we'll do number one. Thank you. Tell me about some of your favorite food vendors there. There's a katsu place. It's one of the biggest servings of katsu you'll ever see big fry, like it's shaped like the United States. They just put it on there, put the katsu sauce. Oh, hell yeah. I got a good bite. I want to mention Olivia because it's a brand new place that just opened and it's vegetarian. And I say this because there's so many Korean barbecue and meat places in Koreatown. I just find it refreshing. I felt like we needed more of a balance. And this is like a new addition to the community. That's a healthier alternative. I love this. <laughs> it's such a chic look. I had it a few times this past week, actually, and it's already helping me. What is your favorite menu item on here? Oh my God, uh, any of the pizzas. Honestly, I'm not going to front. I would say the salad I had there was probably the best salad I've ever had in my life. They had like weird stuff to like fried olives. Fried olives oh. with a macadamia ricotta. This cheese plate thing that was amazing. Hope you're okay with dairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Vegan pizzas and sandwiches and wraps. It just feels like something new in the neighborhood. I grew up in Koreatown, yeah. and during the 90s, I was like, man, I want to get out of K-Town. But growing up, you know, I really realized that, man, I got to come back and help my community, so I wanted to, like, help make Koreatown better. Obviously, we have enough bars and Korean barbecue restaurant. That makes part of the neighborhood, but I'd love to see some new kinds of businesses coming, too. Bye, guys. Thank you so Bye. much for today. Bye. 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 Thank you. So 
Shout out Olivia. Where are we going next? Now we're off to Shrine Karaoke. Karaoke is a part of any night out in Koreatown. By the time you drink at two different bars, we all end at karaoke. Shrine is owned by one of my homegirls, which is great because she represents that generation of sons and daughters who kind of carry on the family business. Korean karaoke is different from regular American karaoke. Korean karaoke's get the private rooms. You're with your friends and you get your own party room. Sometimes I even just like to have the karaoke room and we just put on an ox and we just play our own playlist. It's such a perfect day. So what's the first day? Everything is cool. It can be intimidating because they'll have the automatic score at the end. It's like, God damn, I thought I killed that. <laughs> that was great. That was good? I know you have a podcast called Fun With Dumb. Can you tell me more about it? As I've gotten older, I've become more petty. I've turned into like an Asian Larry David or something. <laughs> but I think people find that entertaining. And I just talk with friends like how just a normal group of Asian friends would talk. I think people found that refreshing to know that there are different types of Asian Americans doing all types of stuff in this world. Really weird industries too. It's become a weekly routine, very easy to do. We really just kind of freestyle our conversations. We probably should prepare more. Yeah, it's been lazy about that. <laughs> Speaking of the neighborhood and the community, I heard you have an NFT called Neighborheads. Yeah, this NFT project called Neighborheads is about supporting local businesses and kind of create a fund through this. That's what Neighborheads all about. Thank you so much for taking us around Korea time today. Bye. Thanks, guys. Peace. normal trees, you know what I mean? Dumb, dumb, you killed it. Wow, I mean, y'all need to try this. For the sake of the video, hello. I don't wanna cover up the bunny. Maybe I'll put it here, is this fine? <laughs>